Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be doing a very special edition of sewing a vintage pattern with a vintage sewing machine. Today we're going to be sewing an antique dress with an antique sewing machine. I am going to be using a Singer sewing machine from the 1910s to make an Edwardian dress or an Edwardian inspired dress. My husband and I uh, restored this sewing machine last year and now I finally have the time and space to use it for a project and I have been putting it off so I can make a project from the same time period as the sewing machine. So if you would like to see me make this dress, go ahead and follow along. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as well as if you'd like to support me further, you can leave me a digital tip on my Ko-fi. The link will be in the description box below. Also, follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore so you can see what I'm up to in real time. So let's get to it. For the dress, we're going to be using Butterick 5970 costume pattern. I'll be sewing view A, which has the most pattern pieces and the long sleeve with the small little puff at the elbow. I think it's a very beautiful dress. I've been wanting this pattern since I first started sewing about five years ago, but I had no reason to purchase it and I definitely didn't have the skill to make it. So now that I have an antique sewing machine, I think it's time to tackle this dress. The reason why I'm going with a big for costume pattern as opposed to a reproduction Edwardian pattern is because I do not want to invest in all of the foundation garments that's required to make this dress what it needs to be if I were making a real Edwardian one. The fabric I'm using today is African wax fabric. I am using this beautiful maroon solid printed cotton. I think it's really pretty and matches well with the printed Ankara that I went with. I love the colors and hues in this. It's perfect for the fall but I can see myself wearing this all year round just because I adore the colors in it. I also think the stiffness and weight of this cotton will really help with shape since I won't have the proper undergarments. My fabric is 44 inches wide, which is not long enough for me to cut the skirt in the direction that I want it to go in. I wanted the flowers to go vertically as opposed to horizontally and wrapping around my body. So I do have to piece the skirt together in the back and the side back pieces. So I start by cutting the pattern on the trim line and then adding a half inch seam allowance to all of the pieces. I'm not concerned about this random seam on the back because it will be covered with trim. That's why I cut it along the trim line. So now on my skirt, the center back pieces and the side back pieces will be made up of eight individual pieces instead of the four that it was made to be. I did make pattern placement a priority so that it's not obvious that the back was pieced together. However, exact pattern matching was not done in order to conserve fabric. So here is a mock-up of the back pieces to show you what I was going for. The pieces are not sewn together, but there's the trim on top covering the seam. The pattern compensates for a petticoat by having you interline the skirt pieces. I used muslin, but they did recommend that you use flannel. I used what I had on hand. Now for the star of the show, you'll see me pivoting the starting stitches because this sewing machine does not have a back stitch. So in order to make up for that, I just swivel at the beginning of my stitch and I get the same effect of a back stitch. This machine was made in 1910. It has beautiful painted details and a lovely filigree faceplate as you can see here. This sewing machine uses a shuttle bobbin, so it's not like the bobbins that you're used to seeing on modern machines or even vintage machines. It's very long, thin, and narrow. The sewing machine is considered a portable sewing machine. It has a bent wood top with a handle, and it is operated by knee lever as opposed to the standard foot pedal. I prefer the knee lever because it doesn't move around and it's very consistent as opposed to your pedal which can tend to migrate across the floor at times. This machine is incredibly heavy so unlike my featherweight which you can check out the video in the card above on my featherweight, I most certainly would not take this on a trip with me because it's about as heavy as any of my other sewing machines and possibly heavier. 
I purchased this machine off of Facebook Marketplace. It was about $20 and it was not in working condition. In most cases on Facebook Marketplace, people will list the sewing machine as working just because the light turned on. But in this case, the light did not turn on and the sewing machine did not sew either. Mr. Serena worked on it last summer. It took about $16 in materials, including a plug, a new plug for it because the machine needed to be completely rewired. So he did rewire it for me, then a little bit of oil and the sewing machine was sewing again. The light needs to be replaced. It was broken off, which seems to be common with this style of machine. And we just haven't gotten around to ordering the proper parts to fix it. So for the remainder of this video, I will be sewing without a light, but that's okay because we are sewing by daylight for the sake of aesthetics. The case slash box for the sewing machine isn't in the greatest condition. So the bent wood box was actually semi crushed and I'm not sure if we still have it, but if we do, we plan on trying to fix it up if at all possible. And I definitely could sand and restain the main box that the machine is sitting in. All of my sewing machines are located in my sewing room, but seeing as this is the only antique machine that I have, it will remain in my bedroom because it is the most ornate and really matches the art deco theme that I have upstairs. Plus I think it'd be really nice to sew fireside when it's cold and I have small touch-ups to do on projects. This singer is very powerful. It is arguably the strongest, fastest, machine that I have of all of my sewing machines. So it definitely needs to be on a sturdy table. This little end table that came with the house is not that, but it will do for the sake of this video. I will definitely be on a hunt for something a little bit more sturdy because everything so far wobbles really bad when it's in partial speed. It's, I have yet to max out the speed of this machine. The final thing I want to note about this particular machine is just like the featherweight, it does not have marking on the stitch plate for seam allowances. So I do have to use a seam guide and I am borrowing the one from the featherweight for this. You can order a magnet online and some sewing machines has reproduction stitch plates with the marking on it. I'm gonna order another guide for this machine, but if you do not have one, you can always mark your seam allowance directly on the fabric. Now that we've done a quick overview of the sewing machine, we'll get into the sewing of this dress. Here I am winding the bobbin. You can see it's a long, narrow bobbin in the right corner. The skirt has been a series of straight stitches, so it's been very simple up until this point. And now I am working on attaching the waistband to the skirt. Because this project is out of the norm of what I usually do, I wanted to do something really special. So I did decide to sew in my bedroom. I think the toned down warmth of my room really allows the sewing machine to shine as well as the colors of the fabric. I think it was the perfect setting for this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the change of scenery. The bodice was assembled in a way that I've never assembled clothes before, so I definitely had to throw out what I already assumed about clothing construction and truly follow the directions. There was a lot of layering wrong sides on top of the right side of the lining, so of course that meant a lot of exposed edges and in order to cover the raw edges you had to use trim for that so the entire bodice was built on top of the lining which means i had to construct the lining first then i had to add the boning to the lining to make up for the lack of corset and foundation garments and with that i 
added in my boning and there was a lot of pieces for it. It was included in the front as well as the side seams and then a, a final strip on the back where you added the hook and eyes for uh, stability. I will say with this bodice, I did not like how short it was and because I don't really know what it is that I'm doing, I couldn't tell if the bodice was too short or was exactly the way that it was supposed to be, but I had a hard time keeping it tucked in the skirt or even over the top of the skirt. So it was definitely an odd situation and I'm wondering if it had an actual corset, if it would have stayed put. So if you have an answer to that question, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Now I'm sewing the gather bodice top on top of the lining and the yoke piece that we made earlier. The raw edges will be covered with trim. I had a hard time finding black lace in store so I did have to make my own trim and I used a ruffle foot for this and I made pleated trim with some ribbon. I figured since this type of foot existed when the machine was made that it would be pretty okay to make my own trim. Maybe someone did and I wasn't the first person to do it. After that, I bound the edges of the bodice to close up the raw edges on the bottom. And then we start working on the seven piece sleeve. This was an extremely long and boring process, especially since I was just so eager to try on the entire piece and I underestimated the time that it would take to make this project. I was in a hurry to be able to take pictures in the fall foliage while it was still on the tree and there was still some on the ground. And so I definitely would not recommend this project as something that you would rush to do or was time sensitive, or at least if it is that you allow yourself enough time. So for the trim, I used satin ribbon, a lace trim that I dyed a cocoa brown and I also used a thin velvet ribbon as well. I had a lot of velvet ribbon in this project, plus I had a whole bunch saved over from Christmas shopping, so I felt like it was the perfect way to get rid of some scrap ribbon and use up some of what I already had since this project cost me quite a bit of money in fabric alone. So once all of the trim was attached, I put a brooch in the center to tie all the pieces together. Then by hand, I put in a lot of hook and eyes for the closure down the back of the bodice. So the entire dress and skirt is put on with hook and eyes. I also made a velvet belt to help cover the seam between the bodice and the skirt. And that was it. Here is the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and share it with someone who you think might like it as well. If you'd like to support me further, you can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi. The link will be in the description box below. You can also follow me on Instagram to keep up with me in real time. See you in the next one. Bye.